With a bit of 3D printing, it's surprisingly easy to make custom neon lights like these. I'm going to show you how to make one yourself in this tutorial. All right, for this project, we need access to a 3D printer. We need filament. I recommend some lighter filament. I'll be using glow in the dark and a dark color filament. And then of course we need the filament LED lights. You can pick those up on AliExpress. Just head over there and search for filament lights or filament LEDs. You'll see a lot of options. Just pick a seller that has really good ratings like this one. And for most of your projects, you'll want the longer option, which is 300 millimeters. All right, let's get started on the design. We'll use some free browser-based tools. The first one is cuddle.xyz. And with this application, we can create vectors or lines, which later we can extrude into a 3D form. To start a new project, then once you're inside your workspace, drag a new text box over into your space. And you'll see all of these options here on the right. So you'll now want to update the text and make sure that it's something a little bit shorter. I recommend between four to six or seven letters. Play with the fonts, but I recommend Pacifico. It's a really good option. All right, we're going to resize this. I recommend a length of about 60 millimeters. And then next up, click on Modify in Boolean Union. So what that does is it merges all of the letters together. There's no separating lines. It just becomes one unified form. And after that, click on Modify and Outline Stroke. And it looks like nothing happened, but here in the properties, if we adjust the size or the width of the stroke, you're going to see now that it expands from the original line. And I recommend a width that follows your nozzle size, which is normally 0.4. So in this case, I've chosen 0.8. And what that means, which you'll see in just a moment, is that the wall thickness will be 0.8 or, or two passes with the 0.4 nozzle. All right, the last step is simple. Click on File and then Export DXF and you can download the DXF file of your project. All right, the other application we're using is called Onshape. It's also for free. So create an account there and then create a new document. All right, I recommend play around with the mouse controls if you've never used CAD software before. It's pretty intuitive once you rotate around and pan and zoom in and out and all of that. Now, what you wanna to do to begin is select the top layer and then create a sketch. So we've got sketch one on the top layer. Now look carefully for the tool called DXF or insert DXF. Now we want to click import. All right, select your DXF file and it will take a second to upload. Looks good. Select your upload and click the green check mark. And there it is. Now we have the lines on our sketch one. So confirm sketch one by clicking the green check mark and now we can extrude forms. To do this, click on the part you would like to extrude, like I've done here, and it will highlight an orange or a yellowish color, and then click the Extrude tool. We're only going to extrude this about 0.4 millimeters. You can play with the thicknesses yourself. And make sure the direction is pointing down by clicking this arrow. Sketch 1 will disappear, so just click on this eye to make it visible again. And now you want to select all of this space between. Extrude once again. Change the direction of the extrude again. And I recommend about 10 millimeters. Also make sure you've selected add in the options before you confirm the extrude. And as you can see, this creates the walls of the neon sign. Okay, we're ready to export. Right click on part one, click export. You can change the name of your project. Make sure the export format is STL for printing. I'm using millimeters in this case and a fine resolution. All right, we've downloaded the STL. Let's open up our slicer and import the file. We want the flat side facing down, so let's rotate this. Quality settings, mess with this if you like. I've got a wall thickness of 0.8. You can use the infill or the resolution that you prefer. Support can be turned off as well. And now we can slice. Now if we look at the preview, we see this has a total of 50 layers. 
I'm going to pull this down to about layer 5 or 6 or 7. The reason why is these first layers will be the lighter color, in my case the glow-in-the-dark filament, and then later I'm going to switch out the filament and use something darker. And what this does is it gives it like a really nice pop effect when the light is just on the surface. But you can play with this, it's totally optional. If you want to print in one light color, that's okay of course too. In order to switch out the filament like this, click on Extensions and then Post Processing. Let's add a script called Pause at Height. We're going to pause at the layer number, and again I recommend 5 or 6 or 7. Alright, we can see now the script is added, and we can slice. And what that's going to do is, as it suggests, it will pause at layer 5 for a moment. That gives you time to switch the filament before it resumes printing once again. So the print's already started, I've got my glow-in-the-dark filament, first layer's looking fantastic, everything's sticking well. Alright, it just finished layer 5, I'm going to take off the glow-in-the-dark filament, and replace it with black. Looks good, the print should resume any moment now, and there we go. And here's what it looks like, we've got this multicolor effect that's turning out great. And here's the final result. Again, you don't have to do it with different colors, I just really like how it pops out when it's got that black wall background. You can see that extrusion of 0.4 gives us a nice transparency, not too much, not too little. All right, let's take our filament light and get to work. I do recommend tweezers for this job, it just makes everything a lot easier. Start with one end inserted, leaving just a little bit exposed, and loop it through. These filament lights are almost a little sticky, so you don't need any glue, they just hold in place really well. And this is what it should look like when you're done. These are rated for about three volts. I've got it hooked up to my power supply here. Let's do a quick test. Wow, that is really awesome. Of course you can take this to the next level with power supplies, adding a switch, but what I recommend if you just want to get started fast is use one of these 3 volt button batteries. It's best to use a battery pack for these and wires, but you can even use copper tape like this to make the connection. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Talk to me in the comments if you have any questions, and of course please subscribe and follow. I'll do tons of cool projects, and please share yours. I hope it goes well. I'd love to see what you make.